ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and today we're talking about Intel's upcoming 9th generation CPUs, codenamed Whiskey Lake, we'll call them the 9000 series, uh, CPUs, whatever you like to call them. Uh, we're getting quite a bit more information now, and it's looking pretty interesting, that's for sure. So let's start out with the motherboards. That's a good place to start. So one of the biggest complaints many people have with Intel is that every time they bring out the new series of CPUs, you have to upgrade your motherboard. And this is sort of going to be like half the case this time around, at least from what we know at this stage. So Intel will be bringing out Z390 for the new CPUs. But it looks like you will be able to use them with your existing Z370 motherboard. So that's really good means that if you already have Z370, you obviously will just keep using that. Uh, but if you're buying it all for the first time, then you probably want to train towards the Z390. Now, we don't have a huge amount of information uh, on those. Well, confirmed information, that is. But I can't imagine that Z390 will be much different from Z370, to be perfectly honest with you guys. But back to the CPUs. That's the interesting part. So let's look at the latest information and see what the lineup is going to be looking like. And we'll start at the very top. So this is going to be a first for Intel because it'll be their first 8-core CPU on the mainstream lineup. It'll also be the first time they've put an i9 on the mainstream lineup, which is uh, pretty interesting there. So it's 14... <laughs> so they're called 14 nanometer plus plus. So it's an 8-core, 16-thread CPU, the 9900K. Coming in with a base clock of 3.6 gigahertz, but I would just forget about that uh, because most people would be running good cooler with it. The main one you should be looking at is the all-core turbo. So 6 to 8 cores at 4.7, that's crazy. And of course, a 1 to 2-core turbo of 5 gigahertz. And of course, that 95-watt TDP. And if you don't know why I'm doing this maybe someone in the comment section down below will clue you in but yes a 95 watt tdp so yeah that's interesting uh very very powerful cpu by the looks of it let's imagine for the sake of argument that ipc instructions per clock stays the same between uh coffee lake the eighth gen and the ninth gen so if you clocked the 8700K, you know, at the same clock speeds as uh, like like core for core, it would be the same. You know what I'm meaning? They don't really have an equivalent because there's no six thread, uh, six core, 12 thread CPU on the new lineup, as you guys can see. But uh, let's just pick an equivalent, say the 8600K was probably be a better one. 8600K versus the 9600K. That's a better example. If you clock them at the same clock speed, I honestly think you're not going to see any difference. If there is, it'll be very, very minute. I would say within a few percentage points. One, two, three percent type thing. That's not going to be where you'll see the gains. The gains will be obviously from the extra cores and threads, at least on these higher end ones, and the extra clock speed. So the 9900K will be the most powerful CPU you can buy. I can tell you that already, uh, as far as gaming goes. It'll be insane. That thing will be so powerful. The issue is if we look on the lineup again, the price, 450 US dollars. Now, we have to take all of this stuff with a little bit of a grain of salt, but a lot of these specs seem legit to me. 450 is way too high. Now, I'm not sure. They could be bundling it with a really good cooler. It may come with, like, a, an included liquid cooler. That's wishful thinking on my part, but it could be the case. And if it did, then it could justify that $450 price point. But if it doesn't come with a cooler at all, then it's going to struggle because even though it will be so powerful... Things like the 2700X will just be so much better value for money because you're paying quite a bit less and you're actually getting still a very, very good CPU. So that's my biggest worry there. But let's drop down and go to the top i7. 
and that will be the 9700K to replace the 8700K. Now bizarrely, Intel's going from a 6 core 12 thread CPU to an 8 core 8 thread CPU. Once again, the clock speeds are upped. <laughs> Not by much though. Uh, so your 8700K would go up to 4.7 gigahertz on one or two cores. This guy, you're going to be going up to 4.9 on one core, 4.8 on two. So it's basically a, a 1 to 200 megahertz bump up, uh, at least on, you know, the, the one or two cores. Uh, but the all core speeds have come up quite a bit. So all core on the 8700 is 4.3, and that's come up to 4.6. That's going to be good, especially for the guys doing productivity stuff. That'll be quite noticeable. Uh, and the price point remains the same. 8700K was always selling for around 350 USD, and this guy's going to be coming at 350 USD. So the 9700K will be at the same price point as the 8700K. As far as the performance goes, I have no idea. This will be very interesting, actually. Of course, it has the advantage in clock speed, but it also have less threads, but it has two more physical cores. I think it's going to be quite application dependent, but this will be a very interesting thing, and I can't wait to do a showdown between the 8700K and the 9700K, because I think uh, that will be quite interesting. I'm not sure how much difference there'll be in games, but in the productivity stuff, that will be what I'm looking for. Uh, but I, I can't imagine that the 9700K will be slower than the 8700K, given the clock speed advantages and plus having two more physical cores, uh, I, I don't see it losing to the 8700K, but that's just my opinion. As we drop down the lineup now, the top two are quite interesting, 9700K and the 9900K. But when we go down to the 9600K and, and below, we see that it's very, very similar to the current lineup. So it's six core, six threads, all the way down to the 9400 which is pretty much exactly the same as Coffee Lake, the 8600K, 6 core, 6 threads, all the way down to the 8400, 6 core, 6 threads. The main difference we're seeing here is with the clock speeds, but even then, it's not that much difference. Uh, they're all within sort of 1 to 200 megahertz boost ups over their Coffee Lake counterparts. Uh, so I'm not really sure, like the 9400K, it's just 100 megahertz higher on the top end. You know, so 8400 go up to 4 gigahertz, 9400 goes up to 4.1. It's like, really? And I doubt there's going to be much IPC difference anyway. So I think those two, the, the 9400 will probably just be barely better in terms of performance over the 8400. And that will extend through the entire range up to the 9600K which again has those higher clock speeds, does go up uh, quite a bit more. I believe it's 300 megahertz on the top end. Yes, it is. So the, the 8600K went to 4.3, uh, but the 9600K will go to 4.6. Those are K skews anyway, so most people would be overclocking them, in which case it won't really matter. Uh, it's still a six core, six thread CPU. This, this feels strange to me. So it seems like it will be I'll throw this out there right now. This is my prediction. If you have an i5 or something right now, say you have the 8400, great CPU, 8600K, also a very good CPU, but the 8400 is exceptionally good value for money. I would see no need whatsoever, judging by these specs, to upgrade to the equivalent on uh, these new 9000 series CPUs. Even if you were to go up a model or two, uh, there wouldn't be really any need. I see this is mainly being focused on the high end, those top two, the uh, 9900K and the 9700K. Those two will be interesting, and I see those two having the biggest gains over their Coffee Lake counterparts. But for these lower ones, the i5 range, I see no point in them whatsoever. Just like Intel just needed a filler. They've bumped up the clock speed slightly, but the core counts are all the same. IPC seems will most likely be indifferent as well. So, yeah, I don't see many people going out and buying them unless they just didn't, you know, haven't upgraded in years and years and years, and this was their first time going back to buy a new PC, and then they might consider them. 
but uh, we're seeing a much, much, like a very slight upgrade over it by comparison of what we saw between Ryzen 1 and Ryzen 2, uh, which, which seemed to be a bit better of an upgrade from going from Ryzen 1 to Ryzen 2, as far as the Ryzen 5s are concerned anyway. Uh, although some people may construe that going from the 1600 to the 2600 may have been a little bit of a downgrade and that the 2600 uh, had a worse cooler than the 1600. But that's a different story for another day. And I just wanted to talk about this lineup and what I think of it so far. But yeah, what do you guys think? Uh, let me know in the comment section down below. I just wanted this to be a bit of an opinion video. Obviously, I've tested all the Coffee Lake CPUs. I pretty much tested all the KB Lake ones, the vast majority of them anyway, for the short time that it was out. And uh, my TLDR basically is, uh, it looks good on the high end, but the mid-level stuff, I don't see, it's, it's pretty much no change. And overall, I think this just shows Intel's desperation. Um, but I'll still be very interested to check out the, those top two, the 9700K and the 9900K. So yeah, as I said before, let me know in the comment section down below what do you guys think. Would you be interested in it? I saw a poll and a lot of people are interested in the 9900K. I mean, if you've got money to burn and you're not worried about value for money, then that will be a seriously powerful CPU. Don't let anybody tell you different, guys. That will be a very, very powerful CPU. But I want to know what you guys think. Now, thank you all for watching this video, and I'll see you all next time.